Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, Joffrey Noodle Legs here today with Little Sullivan. Here we are today doing a, another Noodle film review. Today we're looking at uh, The Dungeon Master, one of Empire Movie Studios films. Just let me bring this a little closer, guys. That's it. Yeah, this, this is... um. Uh, a film that was, I can't remember the year it came out. I'm, it must be the 1980s. Uh, doesn't really tell me on here, but you can always look that up yourself. Uh, this is based on a, a, a guy, I think his name's Paul. He's an absolute sort of computer geek. And his the computers are just sort of coming out, sort of really. So they were all kind of new to to the world, the sort of home computer. And he lives his life based on computer and gadgets, and gadgets that he makes up, and it makes him this sort of he thinks he's this a uh, great guy, like he's got these um his glasses that he wears, and he goes running. When he finishes work, he run. He goes running home after work. Instead of driving home in the car, he runs home. But he, when he comes to like busy roads, he clicks on his glasses, and the glasses change the lights uh, to red, so the cars have to stop, so he can run. It's all sort of stuff like this. And he, uh, he wants to buy some flowers for his girlfriend, who she's like a dancer. We see her sort of dancing at a, at a, a dance sort of school, and. Um, he wants to buy some flowers for on the way home. Hello, baby. Little boy's here. Um, and uh, he's got no money with him, so he goes to a cash point. Uh, and and then he's sort of like, uh, oh, what are you doing, mate? Are you going to come up? Come on in. Come on, up you get. Pop up. So he, he um, oh, here he is, everybody. There he is. So he, he then uses his glasses again. To get some cash out. Um, and then he buys these flowers and heads home. Um, his girlfriend goes home too. And she's sort of like. Brought all this shopping and this stuff. And he's talking to his computer. And his computer tells him that he's he's got no money left in the bank. And he goes oh I'm working on it. Sort of thing. Anyway. Um, he then out of nowhere just asks his girlfriend to marry him. And she's in two minds because she thinks she's in love with his computer more than everything else. And he sort of tries to persuade her, no, you you know, you're the first. But the computer's important and all this sort of stuff. And it all sort of goes on and on and on. And at night time, he sort of like has a sort of dream um, where he's this kind of, uh, I don't know, this kind of um, adventurer in this ridiculous looking outfit, like a sort of grey sort of spacey sort of looking outfit which looks stupid and and then and he sort of like thinks he's this sort of superhero sort of thing in, in sort of space and then he wakes up and his girlfriend's missing and he then goes looking for her and the the, the front the room where the computer is the front room it's all sort of like misty with sort of um, dried ice and stuff like this and he gets sucked into the computer and when he's sucked into the computer, he comes to this different sort of really weird sort of world, like a, 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 a reality sort of world. And his girlfriend's kind of tied up, chained up on this sort of rock. And there's this sort of like evil sorcerer sort of guy. And he he's supposed to be some sort of kind of like the devil sort of thing. And he's there with... um. He's there to try and save his girlfriend. And now he's back in his stupid leotard. All right, um, and he's um, this devil gives him seven challenges to to complete um, if he wants to get his girl back and sort of um, to sort of save the world or whatever it is. So he then has to go on and face these sort of challenges. The first one's in like this ice world, and see he's got to face a challenge in there. So I'm not going to tell you about any of the challenges. But I'll let you try and find them out for yourself what they are. Um, and if if you know, and what happens, um, but this is the kind of thing that sort of goes on, and in all these challenges, he meets all these different sort of creatures, like some sort of zombies in other, and in one sort of challenge, he's even got to 
faced um, classic 80s uh, heavy metal band Wasp as, as they turn up in the film. So he's got all these challenges to sort of go by. And does he do it and save his girl and go back to normal? Well, you need to watch it and sort of find out, because that's all I'm going to tell you. What do I think of um, Dungeon Master? Well, think of the worst film you've ever seen, ever. Then double it. Then double it again. And then you're close to what Dungeon Master is. Okay, so if you want to see probably the worst film you ever see the worst actors you ever see the most lame and cheesiest challenges that have ever existed he'll go to one area for a challenge do this on his device he's got on his wrist fires a laser out challenge done goes to another challenge and there's some creatures there does this to his wrist fires a laser challenge done it's like that it's the lamest sort of challenges ever and it just looks so fake, and the acting is awful, the effects are terrible, it looks cheesy and awful as hell, so it's brilliant. I absolutely really enjoyed it, it's such a good film. It's the worst film I've ever seen in my life, um, but I still got something out of it. I really enjoyed it, it was just fun, stupid sort of film and that's all i got out of it i didn't get no amazing oh i can see why this is a cult film i didn't get none of that out of it i just thought well this is like the worst and cheapest lamest film i've ever seen but it's fun and i i absolutely enjoyed it for that purpose only because you know what i'm like I, I like really bad acting so the acting didn't bother me in fact i kind of liked that the best bit the best bit in this film was the acting and probably the soundtrack which was quite epic. Um, the effects were terrible. They're the worst effects I've ever seen. And the challenges that he has to do, they probably all last about five minutes and they're all rubbish. And it's like a... It's like, take a star, really 1960s Star Trek set and make it worse. Um, everything seems to be made out of paper mache. Um, so, say, say, say if someone come into your garden and then wanted to film... Um, I'm going to film the new Tron film uh, in your back garden. This is what it was like. It's like that. It's that poor. Um, but it was still good fun. It does try to copy things like um, Tron and um, what's that time machine sort of thing. It, it had all these sort of elements going on in there. To me, it was like supposed to... They're trying to do like a futuristic Rocky Horror show, if you ask me. But it just failed. Just didn't work at all. But that's why I really like it. Uh, the pluses of the film, the transfer is really nice. It does look really, really cool. Um, it does have that real 80s feel to the film. Um, you can see why this would have been under the gone right under the radar um after when it come out on video rental um i think the only thing that would have sold it people would have rented it out would have been because of the original cover they would have thought my word that looks amazing that looks like a almost looks like a video game like an atari sort of video game it looks really cool and it does that's what it it looks like sometimes it, it Sometimes when I was watching it, I thought, this is really like the worst Atari video game that's ever been made. Um, but they've done it as a film. Um, but I liked it. I really enjoyed it. I got something out of it. I had a fun time just watching it, having a bit of a giggle at it. I didn't laugh. I had a little giggle at it, and so sort of, it brought a smile to me face. It was that kind of film. So I'm going to the, the the minus is the film is terrible um so i'm going to score this film a, a, a great watch and give it a seven out of ten which i think is a really high score for probably the worst film i've ever seen um and you're thinking that that doesn't make sense you're saying it's it's great but it's the worst yeah because the worst is what makes it great you know you've always got to try and find things in life that are some things that you really dislike you've got to think i've got to find something good in it you know, and I did struggle, but when I, when, after watching it, I just thought, you know what, that was fun, you know, it's not anything I'll probably ever go back and watch again, um, I, I doubt it, 
the probably the only time I'll probably watch it again is when the lad comes up and if he wants to watch it and he makes me sit through it. It's probably the only time I'll watch it again. I'm not sure how, because I know this does have a bit of a cult following and a lot of people really enjoy it. And kudos to them. But I, I don't see in that what they see in it. I, I just saw a really badly made sort of film with some terrible acting. And the acting is the bit that I liked. Because I love terrible acting. It's really cool. There's just some really cheesy lines in there. Like when they're in the frozen ice challenge. And it's like and the girl's going, oh my God, I'm freezing, I'm freezing, I'm cold. Look, my hands are, are freezing up. And he just and the guy goes, just be cool. I'm just thinking, you know, it's just stuff like that. It's just really cheesy. And that's what gives it its charm. It's a charming film uh, rather than uh, an, an amazing sort of film. But it's cool. And that is my review of Dungeon Master, 7 out of 10. Any of you guys seen it? If you have, let me know down below. If you've seen it. You, you might not have it, because this came out on VHS, and it, it was like a, it would have been a rental film, and it probably disappeared as soon as it came out. People probably rented it, and thought, my God, this is awful. And it probably ended up in the sort of 99p bucket. Um... And some people probably bought it for 99p, went home and loved it and became like cult followers of it. And if you didn't do that, then the film would have disappeared into obscurity. Um, but this has been released by Arrow in the um, Enter the Video Store box set um, the, from the Empire sort of films. And this was the first sort of film in there. I'm not including it in my... Uh, Enter the video shop week. Uh, I'm I'm just doing this on its own because I I just had so much fun watching it. I thought I want to do a review of this and get it out there and tell you how shocking it was and how bad it was, but then how great it was at the same time. Um, so yeah, so this would have been a really obscure sort of film um, that just disappeared. This one, this this actually contains three versions of the film. It contains the pre-release version, which has a tiny bit of nudity in it, not a lot. Just a bit of nudity at the beginning. Um, the second is the international um, version, which was which would have been one we would have got here in in the UK and in Europe out in VHS. And then it's got the US uh, edition, um, which is the, the version that they they got. Um, and I think what happens in these is that the sequences, the challenges, are in different order. So maybe with the, with the challenges in different order, it might have been better. I don't know. I don't know. But it was it was just shocking, but brilliant. Um, it was pure cheese, absolutely pure cheese. You're not going to get nothing out of this film apart from uh, a popcorn fun evening. If you were together with your mates and you got some beers and popcorn, put something like this on for a giggle, and and you'll probably have a good time. You know, it, it tried to be so many things. It tried to be Flash Gordon. It tried to be Conan. It tried to be Rocky Horror Show, all wrapped into one. And it didn't turn out being any of them. Um, but there we are. It was quite weird seeing Wasp in, in, in there. But there we are. And that's my review. Guys, till my next uh, review, check out some horror channels for me. Check out Horror Hands, The Horror Geek, Man V Film, RS Designs, Pizzowell, I Am The Ice Lord. Um, Sarah of Horror, Cat Watches Horror Movies, and ha and Grumpy Andrew's Haunted House. And a massive shout out to my lad Lemon Lord. Till next time, look after yourselves, look after one another, and I really hope I'll see you all soon.